This is the export, and in this video, we will be testing the RTX 3050 that's behind me here. This is the SOTAC model, and we will be comparing it to, to the 6500 XT and some older options. So let's get to unboxing this uh, SOTAC card. Uh, the box itself is slightly larger than the box for the 65. 100 XT, as you can see here. So here we go, and in the box you get amplified. And here is the important part. Inside the anti static bag is the GPU. So this is also where fairly small card. It's slightly larger than the 6500 XT, as you can see here, but uh, very, very slightly. There are, they are very similar. It's also slightly, sh uh, it's, uh, so it's longer than the 6500 XT, but it's also shorter. Uh, the 6500 XT is slightly taller. The back plate is made of metal and it has some fancy cutouts. If you haven't seen my 2070 Super uh, SOTAC review, SOTAC 2070 Super Twin Fan review, uh, if you have seen it, you will probably have seen that the uh, writing on the backplate was upside down. But uh, that appears to not be the case with the 3050. There's a single 8-pin power connector, which is slightly more than... Uh, well, it's, uh, it's, a it's a larger connector than what's on the 6500 XT, which is a 6-pin. And the heatsink itself looks a bit uh, larger. So, other than that, the card looks pretty good. It has four uh, display outputs, which is twice as many as on the 6500 XT. And here we have three display ports and one HDMI. The test system today is the same as it was for the 6500 XT. We're using an AM4 platform with the ASRock B550M Pro 4 as a foundation, with the previously good value Ryzen R5 3600 with 16 GB of 3733 MHz memory with 80, 90, 1938 timings. The cooler was simply the rate Spire from the R5 1600 and a 650 watt power supply. We're aiming at medium to high settings at 1080p and comparing it with some older relevant cards and the Brigger brother, the RTX 3060. Overall, the RTX 3050 delivers better performance than the GTX 1070 almost across the board, with the only exception being Outriders, where the 1070 is able to edge it out. Although it's so close, we may as well call that a tie. In Cyberpunk 2077, the RTX 3050 pulls away from the 1070, being almost 40% faster. In a set of course competition, it even managed to outperform the RX 6600 XT, although this was probably in part caused by a CPU bottleneck hampering the 6600 XT, and in part because this is an NVIDIA title, and the NVIDIA cards show very strong performance in this title. In Forza Horizon 5, the AMD cards show strong performance, and here the RTX 3050 is actually coming in behind the RX 6500 XT, although this is the only title where this is the case with the RTX 3050 being out the RX 6500 XT in all other titles, including Assassin's Creed Valhalla, which generally shows strong performance on AMD cards, in Rainbow Six Siege, which is hardly a surprise, and in Doom Eternal. In Halo Infinite, the RTX 3050 is delivering over twice the performance of the RX 6500 XT, although I do suspect the high setting is a bit uh, too ambitious for the 6500 XT in this title, and cards with 4 gigs of memory in general. The RX 6500 XT is also soundly defeated by the RTX 3050 in Life is Strange True Colors, with the 3050 outperforming the 6500 XT by over 50%. Although this is another of the titles based on Unreal Engine, where the NVIDIA cards show very strong performance. In the remaining games, the delta between the 3050 and 6500XT shrinks to 20% in Shadow of the Tomb Raider with medium settings, no ray tracing, and 14% in Hitman 3. Turning over to average performance, and the RTX 3050 ends up at 118.3 frames per second on average. All in all, a respectable performance for a card which has an MSRP of 250 USD. More on that later. 
if we normalize for D3050, we see that it is a bit faster than the DTX 1070. But if you are a 1070 owner, I would hardly call D3050 an upgrade. If you're on a 1063 gig, 970, R9290 or a Polaris card, then the 3050 is a decent upgrade, maybe apart from 580s and 590s. The 3050 is about 35% faster than the 6500 XT, not bad for a card that only has a 25% higher MSRP. Uh, it's clearly a no-brainer, is it not? Well, not really. Uh, and that brings us to value. I didn't use MSRP for the value chart in the 6500 XT review, and I will not do it here either. For the RTX 3050 and all the current generation cards, I took the lowest price of an in-stock item on PC Part Picker and used hardware unboxed numbers for the GTX 1070 and 1063 gig. For the RN 290 and GTX 970, I used 120 USD because you should not really pay more for the cards that are that old. So the value chart shows that the 250 USD MSRP is a pipe dream. The markup is substantially higher than for the RX 6500 XT, while the 6500 XT ITX model has a markup of 30% compared to MSRP. The 3050 Twin Edge OC has a 76% markup compared to 3050 MSRP. But of course we already knew this would be the case because the OC model of the Twin Edge from Sotac has an MSRP from Sotac themselves of $399. A massive 60% markup for what, you might ask? Well, for a couple of megahertz higher boost clocks. It's no surprise then that there were no non-OC cards in stock at launch, because even though these SKUs exist, I sort of doubt we will see them in stock at least not in massive quantities. And if you do, you should probably pounce on that thing. At 250 USD, this is a good value card. Uh, and even at 299, it's not bad. But it's not 250 USD. The fact that Sotec felt the need to set an MSRP of $399 points to one of two things. Either that they are taking advantage of the current situation, and they would not be alone in doing that, or that the 250 USD price point was unrealistic from the beginning. Whatever the case may be, this results in the fact that the RTX 3050 is about as good value as a 6600 XT for 620 USD or a used 1070. On the bright side, it is better value than the 3060. So if you are deciding between a 1070 and the 3050, you should go for the 3050. It's a newer card with lower power consumption, higher performance and with added features such as DLSS and ray tracing. But the fact remains that the 6500 XT from a value perspective is the best card right now in terms of performance. The problem is though that the 3050 will no doubt be a relevant card for longer for two main reasons. One is 8GB of VRAM and second is the ability to use the LSS. So that is something you should take into consideration when comparing these two cards. Moving on to power consumption, uh, this is total system power consumption from the wall. With the RTX 3050 installed, the system pulled 268 watts from the wall, which is good. Lower consumption than the 1070, but higher performance, the way it should be. But how is the efficiency? Watts per average FPS is our next chart, and here the 3050 delivers slightly worse efficiency than the 3060, but better than the 6500 XT and all the older cards. This is good and shows that even though NVIDIA is using a less cutting edge process compared to the 6500 XT, they still beat it for efficiency, which begs the question why the 6500 XT is delivering such bad efficiency. We may never know, but we do know how the 350 performs in ray tracing. First off, Shadow the Tomb Raider with medium settings and RT set to high. Here the 350 is delivering around 60% higher performance compared to the 1070 and the 6500 XT. The 3060 is delivering a 37% performance uplift compared to the 3050. In Doom Eternal, you cannot enable ray tracing on the 6500 XT, so that uh, that's the reason why it's not in this chart. And here the 3050 delivers good performance. It is fairly close to the more expensive 6600 XT, but again, the 3060 was obviously faster by about 40%. But how does the Sotac cooler perform? Well, as it turns out, it's actually pretty good. In the OpenNet testpens, the Twin Edge maintained a GPU temp of 63 degrees Celsius in a 22 degree room with a hotspot temp of 75 degrees Celsius. This is a good result and well within safe limits and then some. 
but good temperatures means nothing if the card has to blast the fans at full speed. Thankfully, that was not the case with the Twin Edge. Fan speeds while running the Time Spy tr stress test uh, settled at 1503 RPM, at which point the noise level 30 cm away from the fans was 40 dBA. All in all, a good result, and while there are cards that do perform better, or, or coolers that do perform better, they are usually also more expensive. So the Sothek RTX 3050 is actually a good card. It's cool, it's quiet, and it looks rather good in my opinion anyway. Uh, compared to the 6500 XT, you do get twice the display output, twice the VRAM, you get uh, hardware encoders, and you do get 35% uh, more performance uh, for a price. So the MSRP of the 3050 it's 250 USD and at that price it's a no-brainer over the uh, 6500 XT. Unfortunately I haven't yet to see any models in stock at that price so I'm not really sure how realistic the MSRP is and uh, the MSRP would put uh, this card in direct competition to the well, close to direct competition to the 6500 XT, but uh, at the, the based on the prices that I've seen right now, the 3050 is actually more in competition with the 6600 non XT, and that's the competition is going to lose. So based on the tech power ups results, the uh, 6600 non XT uh, is actually about 30% faster than the 3050 on average. And on PC part picker, uh, the uh, 6600 is about 20 USD more expensive than the 350, and well, it's obviously worth it uh, compared to the 350. And where I live, uh, a lot of the 350s are actually more expensive than some of the 6600s, so yeah. It, it's going to depend on the, where you are located and the prices in your region. If you can find one for 300 uh, to 350 USD, then it's worth it over the uh, 6500 XT in my opinion because of the extra features and the better performance. Personally, I would rather pay 300 to 350 USD uh, for the 350 uh, than 260 USD for the 6500 XT. But if that's not an option for you, if you can't go above 300 USD, the 6500 XT is basically your only option when, when buying new. If the price of the 3050 is close to the 6500 XT, go for 3050. If the price of the 6600 is close to the 3050, go with the 6600, not XT. Uh, that's really my general recommendation. If the 3050 price is close to a 6600 non XT, personally I would go with the 6600 non XT unless there is some specific reason why you want NVIDIA. Maybe it's DLSS, maybe it's encoders, maybe you're fanboy, I don't know. Then sure, you can you can do that, but be aware that you are getting lower performance in most uh, most titles. As a side note, I did uh, pay 30% more for this 3050 than I did for this 6500 XT, which basically makes the 3050 better value, which is ironic. So it, it is going to depend on the region that you are in and you should you should check out the price and then check out average performance. Uh, maybe the ones, the numbers that I got that you looked at a bit earlier, or other numbers, and you can try to uh, calculate the value for yourself. Because it is it is difficult to make a generalization when the prices are vary so much depending on region and stuff like that. The 350 is a good card for if you can get it for the right price. And uh, yeah. Of course, that could be said of all the cards, but that's basically it for this video. Thank you so much for watching, and uh, yeah, if you can get uh, one of these for 250 to 350 USD, then sure, it's an okay buy in this current market.